Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And guys, today we wanna to talk about Black Mirror. This is season two of episode two, White Bear. Uh, it's actually uh, episode five in the series, but uh, Black Mirror uh, in, the, in the beginning uh, only did three episodes per season. And um, these episodes uh, have increased, uh, as I understand it, uh, you know, as the seasons have uh, went on. So they're actually getting a lot more Black Mirror episodes. Um, and guys, I found this episode uh, very, very, in a sense, kind of relevant to uh, a lot of incidents that's happened today. Uh, in the news and uh, across the world. So, you know, we open up in this episode with uh, this woman who is, um, she seems to be suffering from some type of amnesia. And there's this strange symbol flashing on the screen. Again, Black Mirror with the screens. Uh, screens are very important in technology. Uh, is what drives the Black Mirror uh, show, but this strange symbol is flashing and immediately what comes to mind is this symbol is creating some type of hypnosis or transmitting some type of signal. So I, I did pick up on that right away uh, because I've seen things like that done before. Um, and, um, you know, almost also kind of, it came across to me kind of, uh, metaphorical, you know, as to suggest that there is a type of hypnosis with the media, with information being spread across technology. So I kind of picked up in, in, in that uh, aspect from it. But, um, you know, our main character here, she's just uh, confused. She doesn't know where she's at. She looks like she's been, um, you know, uh, come out of some type of um, uh, incident or trance or something like that. She seems to be in a fair amount of pain, you know, as we got to see. And she just doesn't know what's going on. She has no clue what's going on. So she finally wanders out of the building she's in. And there are people on the streets and um, she's trying to figure out who she is and where she's at. She's, you know, trying to ask people various questions. And all of a sudden we got to see this, this old Rolls Royce looks like pull up with a very strange, disturbing figure step out of the car uh, with some type of mask on. And he grabs a shotgun out of his, out of the back of his uh, car. And all these people are on the streets as this happens. So, you know, what, what came to mind, too, is uh, in the, you know, what's been happening, uh, you know, a lot in the news has been a lot of mass shootings, a lot of incidents with gun control, gun violence, mass shootings. And so as he just grabs this gun and starts to go after this person, um, you know, I'm I'm thinking of, uh, you know, many of these incidents in the media, but, um, you know, what is so shocking about the scene is when we get all of these various people with their uh, with their webcams, you know, with their with their uh, smartphone cams and um, they're recording the entire incident. And where do we see that happen we see that uh, happens today. You know, whenever there are mass shootings, whenever there is there are incidents of that nature, uh, people take out their cameras and uh, they start shooting. You know, they start shooting the incidents and uh, what's going on. And uh, I, you know, I find that uh, uh, that kind of state of mind uh, of how we get how we get information to one another uh, quite interesting. That. With everything going on, somebody's in the mindset to pick up cameras and record this information. Now, uh, it is very, also very important uh, that this information be gathered so we can see what happened, uh, so we can know what's going on. But the nature of people uh, 
getting this information, relaying this information, as we kind of get to see in this scene is what came to mind. And, uh, but it's just, it just looks kind of strange because everybody has out their camera and everybody's recording. And not only are they recording, but they're actually kind of in um, pursuit of her and they're kind of with the gunman, around the gunman, uh, photographing everything. So they don't appear to be in any kind of danger as we got to see. Uh, they seem to almost be with the gunman. So immediately what comes to mind is this is just a, a, uh, a town full of crazy people. Or there's some type of hunters or there's some type of... Uh, there's something going on that is quite weird. And so our main character is not long before she encounters what seems to be a couple of people in the same situation. And they're hiding out in the store as the gunman is trying to get with them and the town people. Now, the town people with the cell phones, they weren't violent at all. They're just recording the data, uh, but they're not doing anything about it. You know, they're not they're not. Um, you know, uh, basically uh, trying to stop it or call the police or anything. Uh, they're just getting the information, so they seem to want to see it. But she does meet two other people that seem to have been in a similar situation. So what, you know, I'm thinking of it like, okay, they're in the same situation as she. They've woken up from this trance, and they're being controlled by this this uh, this subliminal message, this, this hypnotic uh, tr um, uh, transmitted message. Um, and so they devise a plan to escape the gunman. One guy uh, tries to start a gunman. We get to see that he's, or we're under the assumption that he's killed and he's murdered. Um, so it's very, very disturbing episode to see this, uh, you know, when, especially with someone chasing, you know, you with a gun. Now, like Black Mirror came out in, again, this is season two, it's probably the 2012 to 2013 season. And I don't know if the incidence of mass shootings and gun violence was, seemed to dominate media as much as it does today. But with this episode and, what is, you know, uh, now our reality, um, it kind of even made it a more stronger impact, even more disturbing to watch this uh, in, in, um, in relation to that. But uh, so they escape and the idea is to head to a place called White Bear where they can knock out this transmitter that's controlling these people, this entire town that seems to be hypnotized. If that can be accomplished, we're led to believe that uh, everything will hopefully go back to normal, that they're being mind controlled and that our main character is the uh, the person who is uh, in the right state of mind, not being controlled by the by the transmitter. Uh, so they're finally just the showdown at White Bear. They make it to White Bear. All along this this course of action, we got to see our main character. She's seemingly to get back flashes and bits of her memories. She has uh, uh, not only a photograph that she found in the house of what appears to be this young girl who she believes is her daughter and her husband, perhaps, as she's with... Um, uh, another uh, a male character who is uh, f she's having these flashbacks like they were maybe all a family something happened maybe perhaps my mindset was the uh, they were they were possibly uh, killed or taken hostage by these uh, town people that are controlled by this subliminal message maybe they've been turned to uh, be like the rest of them and she's trying to locate them and she's come out of this train. So uh, if that's what I'm thinking and I'm saying, well, it's going that direction. Uh, but we get to find out it's not going that direction at all. What happens is she gets the white bear. She has her final showdown uh, with the hunters. At this point in time, you know, there are other hunters. Uh, they've encountered several other hunters that are constantly after them. 
Um, and she has the showdown with him and, you know, she's able to take the gun from one, try to fire it to kill one. Confetti comes out of the gun. <laughs> and then, uh, they, you know, they grab her, the walls open up at the, at the white bear facility. That's supposed to be where they can knock out the transmitter, but it's not a transmitter. It's actually, as we get to see a public uh audience watching like a game show or something and there's a performance and there's a stage and so at this point you're like what in the world is going on but we get to find out that what's happened is she's basically um it's all been staged you know it's all been watched first thing that came to mind is truman show Jim Carrey and the Truman Show that the reality that this role is artificial and that she had been part of some type of reality show or performance show. Um, and that's basically what it was. But it was also a little bit more than that. Um, it was a justice uh, theatrical performance on justice. It was a justice park that people paid to go and see uh uh, people who cre uh, committed capital uh, offenses, capital murder, to see them uh, live out as a form of punishment, or or be put through these uh, these uh, this situation in order to pay for their crimes against society, and we get to find out that uh, our main character, who we felt was a victim in all of this, is actually a murderer. And a very sick uh, killer with her accomplice, which we don't get to see. I don't know if he's at another park or what happened to him. But they were all together and they had murdered this young child who she felt was her daughter. So just a very interesting turn of events. Uh, reminds me, I won't say the name of the movie, but it kind of reminded me also of a setup of one of M. Night Shyamalan's movies. And I'm not going to tell you which one it is because then it'll ruin the film for you if you haven't seen it, where it's kind of a recreation of the entire rural town. And uh, uh, the truth and the reality of it isn't what the participants think, uh, that it's being used to control them to a certain extent. So a little bit of elements of that kind of reminded me of but she is uh, basically uh, her part of her punishment is to go through this and be hunted and filmed, uh, her murder being filmed, much like how she filmed her uh, this young child's murder and uh, got a weird, sick uh type of satisfaction from it so it seems like the idea of this justice park is to kind of have you go through elements of the crime you committed over and over again and he's um one of the, the people who run the park who was actually part of the the kind of theatrical performance if you will he's marking off check marks on a calendar and my assumption to that is maybe that's marking off the length of her sentence in that park. Uh, so very interesting, uh, you know, kind of brings to mind uh, our justice system um, and uh, what type of, of punishment is, uh, you know, is proper, uh, you know, we live in a world where certain places allow the death penalty and there is a type of, uh, in a way, and that also reminded me of this in, in when people are publicly executed, uh, the families and various victims of the crime uh, can sit there and watch. And I'm, I'm not sure if that still goes on, but I think there you can still witness these public edu uh, executions as I'm, um, you know, I won't say I, I, I don't believe in taking lives uh, that's not something that uh, I feel that uh, can ever really be justified taking a life but um, uh, you know so but at the same time uh, I'm accepting of the laws that society to a great degree feel are appropriate so whereas 
Um, you know, so when you talk about some like capital murder offenses and things like that, you know, uh, and people who publicly witness this, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't publicly witness any of these things. You know, I think that's just horrible or grotesque, but people do it because this is their way of saying this is how justice should be served. And we get no difference at this justice part. People are looking at, which is like a, you know, very, basically torture, basically they're watching this over and over again. This is the victim is experiencing this over and over again, having their memory wiped so they can experience the horror of it uh, in order for justice to be served. At the end of the day, justice is not some type of moral goodness or fairness. Well, it can, well, I'll take that back. It is, can be, I guess you could say it's a type of fairness, but it may not be a objective type of moral goodness. And that what justice aims to do is, pretty much just balance out uh, what was done to create a equal type of judgment and justice. And so if someone is murdered, then the idea to weigh the scales of justice may be that your life is forfeit. And some people would say that's fair. Uh, and it may be fair, but it may not necessarily be good. Uh, it may not necessarily be right. But justice, again, is about a scale that balances and weighs, and it's that's what justice is. It's about giving back what you've taken away, so to speak. So in that regards, you know, that, that becomes a whole big philosophical uh, situation, uh, you know, trying to figure out where to go from that. But I thought this episode was well done, geniusly, geniusly done and, and well thought out. Again, you know, Black Mirror is uh, definitely becoming one of my favorite shows. Uh, this isn't something that has happy endings, though, ever. Uh, or uh, even the episode 15 Million Mirrors, where I found a little bit of wonderment with the technology and especially the closing scene. Uh, even that was a very bitter Swedish ending. And so this show never really is. This is not really a feel good show in that fashion this is a kind of make you uncomfortable push your limits to what society has created type show you know the good and the bad with it but it seems to end mostly on the uncomfortable notes right <laughs> so I, I i'm enjoying it guys i'm you know I've, I've always been one of these show watchers who like to see the moral parameters tested a bit uh, got a lot of that. Uh, I think first in Game of Thrones. I think Game of Thrones kind of paved the way of you know testing a lot of morality and society and shows. And uh, now we're getting a lot of that you know more prevalent in our television watching. But guys, anyway, that's my review on the White Bear episode. I did forget one important fact that summed up the episode, and that is it was called White Bear. Because the young girl who was kidnapped, abducted, and killed, it seems, had this little white bear uh, as a uh, stuffed animal uh, that she kept with her. And when they were filming her, before they murdered her and tortured her, she'd have this white bear. And they called the... Uh, and so they, cr they created the whole storyline around uh, white bear... Uh, inside the episode itself and outside based on the idea of the white bear, them saying that the white bear uh, was the facility to where to knock out the transmitter and the white bear actually being a, uh, a loved uh, uh, kid's item, the child's uh, you know loved uh, stuffed animal. But guys, anyway, that's all I want to say about this week's episode. Guys, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, take care.